Hello and welcome to our Games Radar review of Fallout 76. My name is James and joining me for this review is Zoe. Hello. Hello Zoe. Now you've been exploring this post-apocalyptic wasteland for some time now. Just before we get into the review, let's just explain why this review is a little bit later than when the game came out. So obviously there was the beta and then it came out and we thought, well, I thought that's not enough to review it on. You can't review a game on the beta. I played it all over the weekend, pretty much non-stop um, and gave it my all. So much so that I now find myself craving a box of sugar bombs because I've been seeing so many of them in the games. But basically just wanted to give it enough time to actually have a worthy verdict on it rather than trying to review it off the beta, which is not fair. Okay, so with all that said and having read your review, this game has made you pretty sad, hasn't it? It's made me sad, yeah. It's one of the first things I put in the introduction to my written review because I, like many other people, had such high hopes of Fallout 76. I thought it was going to break new some new ground by combining MMO with survival, but it didn't. It just disappointed me and made me sad because I love Bethesda games. Like, they are one of the things that's got me through so much in my life and I loved Fallout 4 and I adored Fallout New Vegas but Fallout 76 just lacks that warmth and that vibrance that you're familiar with from previous games in the series. It's, it's pretty something because you've been looking forward to this for quite a long time yeah. getting your hands on this and, yeah. and to see you come into the office and look so sad about it yeah. it's, it's disheartening to yeah me. JJ knows me pretty well and uh, when it got, first got announced at E3 we were in the same room and I freaked the hell out and I was so excited played the beta and it has this weird bell curve where you start off and you're like yeah okay you know this is good I like this play another four hours you're like oh my god this is great there's so much new things to discover there are weird creatures there's new regions and then when it gets into the like 18 hour plus mark you begin to come down the other end of it and be like okay no this is cool i don't mind being one faction's last hope but to be the last hope of three other factions and to know that every single outcome of most of the quests is surprise they're dead now you have to continue their legacy is really oddly emotionally exhausting like one of the things that really pushed through obviously New Vegas and Fallout 4 and Fallout 3 before that was that you're surviving for people, you're helping people and you feel like you're genuinely trying to build a new future for the wasteland but in Fallout 76 and I know we knew this before this isn't news to any of us but it's how it feels to know that everyone is dead and you're only doing this for yourself. It's a, it's a, something that I didn't think would affect me quite this much because when it got announced there were no NPCs, I was like, yeah, that's fine. I mean, they might have like robot NPCs. They did specifically say human NPCs. But there's one robot in the game who gives you most of your quests for the Raiders faction called Rose. She's a badass, but dear God, she's about as dimensional as a toaster sometimes. She has like these odd moments of, um, emotional depth where you feel like you're really learning about her but they last like a second and then they're gone and you don't really get the chance to because you have no dialogue options you don't get the chance to ask her more about it she just says her thing and then you just have to wait for the next bit of speech to come along so i was hoping that there were going to be more robot npcs something else to give you like a burning desire to help people or to save someone or like just you know whatever but it didn't happen and it made me sad made me very sad okay well let's talk about the quests a little bit now you've said that th they all feel very similar and because there are no other people in the world they basically all have the end the same end goal yeah the same for the factions the, the they're always a foregone conclusion which is unsurprisingly you're their last hope because everyone's dead mm. so of course you are but yeah, the fact that there are no NPCs is a bit of an issue when it comes to quests because what NPCs do in most games is that they kind of dress up fetch quests to be about much more than just getting to put from point A to B or getting, you know, um, item Z. You're doing it to help someone, you're doing it to reunite someone with someone. Like, there's always an emotional kind of core to the quest and why you're doing it. But with all the NPCs dead, you're left to rely on audio tapes or um, holo tapes or pre just pre-recorded stuff that just plays out when you trigger a quest. And at first that's fine and you're like, no, it makes sense because everyone's dead, but the acting is great. But then once you get into it, it becomes this pattern and you just feel so alone. You're like, I have no one to talk to unless you're playing with friends, which is another side of the story. You just feel like there's no real 
not emotion, but you don't have that real drive to help people because you don't have an NPC standing there looking at you asking for help. You just log into a terminal, find you've got to do X, Y, and Z, go do X, Y, and Z, pre-recorded message plays when you've done it. It just feels really soulless. So that's, I guess, the single player side of things. You mentioned a little bit of multiplayer. Yeah. So playing it with friends does improve the experience. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, play with people you actually like, which is important, but playing with friends is great. Like, there's still that... Um, novelty of playing a Fallout game with people that hasn't quite worn off for me. But playing with friends really does make a difference, if only because you have some other people to talk to and you don't feel quite as alone. Um, and the public events are really fun to do, even by yourself, because you can meet some really great people doing them. I've already made two actual friends in the wasteland, which is, warms my cold, dead heart, just saying that. Um, and because of the PvP, actively disincentivizes people to engage with you if you don't want to fight back. There's this, well, I personally have encountered the cycle of like people actually helping each other out. I've had a level 60 player give me some free fusion cores. I in turn have kind of like kept it going, paid it back and helped out some baby level ones with giving them some stim packs. There's this whole idea of, well, not idea, but there's this feeling that you're all in this together. So you can like wave to people nearby with emotes or heart them or whatever. And the community side of it really does redeem Fallout 76. Like it is, really fascinating and heartwarming and makes me feel like, like a happy person to see people working together and something slowly being built on it like I can't wait to see what 76 in a year and see what the community is then because with the whole trading system there's so much potential for where that can go okay well we've talked about some of the redeeming features there let's go back into the things that you're not yep. quite as happy with okay graphics textures oh, the God. engine yeah Okay. Well, which one of those do you want to tackle first? I mean, why not just all at once? Okay, so Fallout 76 is built using the creation engine, which was also used to build uh, Skyrim and Fallout 4 in 2016. No, 2015. And Skyrim, which was 2011, if I'm remembering correctly. A long time ago. Yeah. The creation engine basically means that it looks like an old game, and dear God, it performs like it too. The amount of bugs I've had over the weekend is astonishing. The game's crashed on me three times, um, I've been able to clip through objects and haven't been able to complete quests because the final item has been broken. I've had enemies T-pose and glide towards me as I'm in combat, which to be fair did make me a lot less stressed because I was sure. too busy like laughing and stuff. Um, I've had textures not load properly and like bright green blobs appear where the textures should be. There's loads of problems. I'm aware that all of these will probably get fixed in a patch, but it just doesn't help that they're there in the first major week and everyone's playing it. I mean, it just it looks like an old game and it performs like it, and I'm afraid alongside games like Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, even Elder Scrolls Online, it just doesn't hold up, and that also makes me sad. Okay, so in summary, there's, there's some tech issues. Yep. There's a problem with the engine. Yep. The enemies are good. The enemies are good, yeah. The new enemies they've added, the cryptids, they're technically called, but they're monsters to you and me. The stuff like uh, the Wendigo, the Mothman, the Scorch Beast, they're great. They, you have this moment where you see them the first time and you're like, what the hell is that? And then you're like, do I maybe try and fight it? Do I not? But then because they're so brand new, they have these entirely new ways of attacking you and it feels so... Oh, it's just so, I can't find the word to explain it, it's so thrilling to find something where you don't know what it is and you want to find out what it is and you want to fight it and like take a photo with it because you've killed it at last and it's, it basically makes you feel like a mini monster hunter, like from Monster Hunter World, because there are these new things that you want to find, they're really elusive some of them, like the Flatwoods monster and the Mothman are very, very rare encounters you can have, so... It's just one of the things which, when in the game, it's fantastic, but on reflection, it makes me frustrated because that is a glimmer of what Fallout 76 could have been, along with different locations like the Mire and Cranberry Bog, which are completely new. The Mire's like this swampy area with grass so tall and high that you're partly obscured with your vision when you're sneaking. These things are so new and novel and like original when it comes to Fallout. It shows you what Fallout 76 could have been if they had been that brave with everything else, which again, makes me sad. Yes. Because on balance, it doesn't outweigh the fact that it's a really oldish looking game and all of the technical side of things doesn't quite come up to standard. Unfortunately not. I'd like to tell you that it's a four out of five game that you should absolutely go and play it with your friends, but if I'm being honest, like give it a year. Wait to see what it's like in a year when they've patched most of the things and when they've probably got new DLC, hopefully with actual NPCs or robots that 
can say hello and goodbye and not make you feel like you're just a bystander. But right now, I really wouldn't go near it unless you're a major hardcore Fallout fan. And that's that's the thing you've said. Like so much like No Man's Sky and to a lesser extent Destiny, all of those games improved, you know, exponentially over time. And Fallout 76 has a chance to do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it might not look any better in a year's time. Probably look a little bit worse, in fact, because it's still on the same. <laughs> engine. But all the tech things might have resolved themselves, and therefore yep. then you just get the exploration and the fun of meeting new monsters and playing with your friends. Exactly, yeah, and hopefully they'll have included some new DLC that will bulk it out too. But yeah, that's my recommendation. Wait and see what it turns out like in a year, and then maybe see if it's for you. So even after all that, if you were still thinking about buying it... I'm so we've sorry! Got a, <laughs> we've got a score to put on it. Zoe, what are you giving Fallout 76 today? I'm giving it two and a half out of five. Okay. Thank you very much, Zoe. Let us know what you think about Fallout 76 in the comments below. Click the boxes on the left for more content from us. And don't forget to hit that big button in the middle to subscribe for more gaming news, reviews, previews, and features right here on GamesRadar+.